so Friday, January 5th, <coughs> notes 2 from unit 8. Um, let's just go ahead and say this one new thing. Frequency is 1 over the period. Let's see, probably most of y'all are in physics right now, but you probably haven't done this in physics yet. When you get to sound waves and light waves, you'll get to that. But frequency is one over period. And think about it, the longer the period, the less frequent something happens. So maybe that helps make sense of that. The longer the period, the, more, the less frequent it happens. Or you can phrase it the other way, the higher the frequency, the more often it happens, so the shorter the period. Okay, uh, the first part of this um, notes today is, is review from yesterday. Um, since yesterday was so long, it's like, all right, let's, let's recap that. Um, yesterday was vertical dilations, that's amplitude, and horizontal dilations, period is 2 pi over b or pi over b, depending on the function. Okay, so number one, write an equation for this function. Well, when I look at that function, I see, well, you tell me, what, what function does that look like? Sine. So I'm starting thinking this is a sine function, and then we got to figure out amplitude and period. So amplitude is usually the easier one. What's the amplitude for this graph? 0. 0.5. Good. Remember, it's not the total height. It's the height above the midline. So the amplitude is 0. 0.5. All right, the period, like one period, is pi over 2. So that means if period equals 2 pi over b, pi over 2 equals 2 pi over b. And then I've just got to like rearrange things to figure out what b is. Uh, I think I would cross multiply. So b pi equals 4 pi. So b equals 4. So 4 will go right there to make my period b pi over 2. Um, what does b look like? Graph b. Cosine. So why don't you try B? You, all you got to do is figure out the amplitude and the period because you know it looks like a cosine graph because it starts at the top. So you try number two, or letter B. So does that look right? B is 3 fourths. Amplitude is 3. And it's a cosine wave. And I kind of try to show all the work. A lot of times, especially as we get going on these, you're... You, you're probably not going to label amplitude and write A equals 3. That's an easy one. You probably aren't going to label the period, but you would, you would probably do some work to figure out what B is. Uh, how about C? What does C look like? It's like a sine graph. So try part C. Good with that. 2 times sine of pi over 2x. What does B look like? Sine. <laughs> it's not like that's a good answer. Sine, but negative. So what would make it flip over? A negative out front, because that's what always makes things flip over in math. So a negative 1, obviously the 1 isn't really necessary. But that amplitude, we still say the amplitude is 1, so be careful. The amplitude isn't negative 1. I mean, we put a negative 1 there to flip it over, but officially the amplitude is 1. So shuffle things around. So negative sine of pi x. Negative would flip it over. The 1 is the amplitude, and the pi there um, changes the period into 2. All right, number 2. Kind of backwards problem. 
let's do the graph. So before I even start on this graph, when I see that I'm graphing a sine, like my brain should immediately think that's what my graph's going to look like. Right? I know it's going to be shifted around maybe or stretched or whatever, but like it should look like that because that's what a sine wave looks like. Just like the first time you or when you graph parabola, it's like you know what a parabola looks like. And then you go into the details of, all right, well, like where's the vertex and is it stretched and all that. Same thing here. It's going to look like that. Uh, amplitude is 2. And period is 2 pi over pi over 2. Be careful, you fraction experts out there. Keep it, change it, flip it. If you're worried about messing up who cancels and who multiplies. So the period is 4. Okay, so that means I'm, I'm going to start at 0, 0, and I'm going to end 4 away. So over there at 4 is the end of my cycle. Maybe this is overkill, but on the first one, I'm going to like sort of map these points point by point here. So A is at the origin. B is 4 away. Halfway in the middle, we'd be on the midline. So halfway in the middle would be right there at 2. And then there's a peak halfway. And my peak, careful here, my peak needs to be 2 up. Two down. So there's my graph of sine. It doesn't say how many to graph, like to fill it up, or is one enough. So usually, unless otherwise specified, I want to see two cycles or two periods. So let's extend this out. So I would I like to jump to the end of the next one. So 4 away would be at 8. And then halfway in between is at 0. Half of that is a max. Half of that's a min. So there's two cycles. And if you want to keep going forward and backwards, you're welcome to. I mean, it's not hard once you made it this far. Just keep following the pattern at this point. And then some students, you don't have to do this, but they'll they'll sort of highlight that first cycle. That when they get done, they can remember, oh yeah, this was a sine wave that started there, and then I copied it around. All right, why don't you try number three? Eh, let's let me do a little bit with you. What's the amplitude going to be? Three. Be careful, though. The amplitude is 3, but somewhere we need to make sure we note that this thing is flipped. So amplitude, we still say, is 3, but somewhere we need to kind of flag it to ourselves that this flipped over. Period is 2 pi over 1 fourth. That would be 8 pi. Uh, it's also helpful when you when you're like your period sort of matches the scale, right? 8 pi would be out here, so that seems like a reasonable answer. All right, why don't you try to graph that one? <clears throat> so there's the first cycle. And I said I wanted two cycles. I don't think two cycles is going to fit, but let's at least uh, extend it. And you can kind of just follow the pattern. We're going down. So 10 pi will be down here. Maybe extend it back a little bit. And then it, it's helpful when you finish a graph to go back and make sure it matches all the things you said. This seems silly, but you'll catch a mistake. You go back and you're like, okay, I said the period should be 8 pi. Yep. I said amplitude should be 3. Got that. And it should be flipped. I got that. Because when I'm grading these, almost everyone gets like the label stuff right. 
and then somehow when they go to graph it, they forgot something. And if they were just taking the time to check, uh, they'd fixed it. All right, try number four. Amplitude is two, period is pi. Again, I'm just like rechecking myself here. And it looks like a cosine wave. And that's two cycles, so that's enough. If you just really enjoy graphing sines and cosines, you could keep going. Um, do we need to do number five, or shall we just skip number five? <laughs> we got the hang of this thing. <clears throat> All right, horizontal translations and vertical translations. This is the new stuff for today, but this is the stuff you already know. We haven't done it with trig graphs, but you've done this before. Um, there's a new name here. A horizontal shift is also called a, called a phase shift. Uh, or the most direct way to call it is just a left or right shift. Like you just jump right to what's happening. We're shifting it left or right. So x plus c, x plus c, and so on. And it works. Like there's a lot of words, but like this is what you expect it to be. x plus 2. Let's just tie it to what we already know. x plus 2. Which way is that going to move the graph? Yeah, left 2. And x minus... Uh, 3 pi, if that was in parentheses, which way would that move the graph? Right 3 pi. So you haven't like implemented these on a graph yet, but you know in theory what's supposed to happen. Vertical translations are uh, even easier. There's the thing at the end, plus d at the very end. Um, they move... I would just phrase it this way. They move the midline, move the midline up and down. So it shifts the whole thing up and down. And this is super helpful with this thing about put a plus on your new origin. Kind of helps you relocate yourself um, after you go left or right or up or down. Uh, in fact, let's just work a problem here. Number six. Um, let's work through these in order. So amplitude, what's the amplitude? One. What's the period? Oh, it's kind of tricky, maybe, because there's not a B there. It's still 2 pi. There's not a multiplier on the x, so it's not been adjusted. It's still 2 pi. The phase shift, what's x minus pi over 4 do? Right pi over 4, and then the plus 2 at the end, up 2. Okay, here's a, a little hint that really helps graphing these things. You find them in order. A, B, C, D, but you use them backwards, D, C, B, A. And we will almost always list them in order. So you'll find them A, B, C, D. Uh, be careful, B is not the period, C is not, you get the idea, A, B, C, D, and then use them backwards. So vertical shift up to, that means we're going to go up to, and I'm going to just go ahead and put, that's my new midline. I'm going to put my midline on there. And then right pi over 4 will put me right here. So that little plus sign is my new origin. I should have done this first. Uh, a sine graph. I'm going to remind myself with a little bitty parent function sine graph. Like that. That's what I'm supposed to look like when this is over. Okay, so I'm using them in reverse. I went up to. I went right pi over four. My period's two pi, so I need to go two pi away from where we started. 
So be careful. Don't go to 2 pi. This doesn't mean we start over at 2 pi. It means we start over 2 pi away from where we start. So yes, that would be 9 pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus 2 pi. And I like to put another little plus there because that's sort of a new origin as well because we're going to start another one at 9 pi over 4. Right. Amplitude is 1. That just means I'll be going up 1 and down 1 from the midline. Okay, so I've got to fit my graph in between there. So again, labeling may be overkill. Sign starts on the origin and ends on the origin. So there's my A point and my B point. My C point is in between A and B on the origin. So directly in between on the origin would be right there. And then halfway between there, I've got a maximum. So halfway between A and C is a maximum, but a maximum is only up one because my amplitude is one. And then label them all, I guess. Halfway between B and C is a minimum. Down one. So there's one cycle of my graph. And again, I want two cycles, so let's just continue it backwards. Now you just kind of follow the pattern. Like every, every two blocks, you're at a new key point, so two blocks away I'm at a minimum, two blocks away I'm at the zero, two blocks away I'm at a maximum, and kind of follow the pattern here. But there's cycle number one. It doesn't have to be highlighted, but I like this highlight. Like that's that's the first cycle. Everything after that is just like copy pasted left and right. You don't even have to label the points. That's just me trying to keep up with where I'm going. Okay. You don't, I mean, I, I should say label them. I want to see them like marked as points, like as dots, but they don't have to be labeled as A, B, C, or max or min. So again, the, the main thing is find them in order, A, B, C, D, and then use them in reverse order, D, C, B, A. <clears throat> All right, number seven. Um, let's see. Probably should have done this first. It's cosine, so I know that it's going to look like that. It's like big picture. At the end of this graph, it better look something like that. Okay, let's start picking on people. Because why not, right? This is your favorite part. So I'm going to ask for amplitude and period and phase shift and vertical shift in that order. So, Michael, you kind of got the hardest ones. So you'd be working ahead there. Andrew, how about the amplitude? Mm -hmm. oh, three. three. That's Michael, how about the period? Working on it? Uh, yes. Because period is 2 pi over b. So keep it, change it, flip it. Yes, 8. Jameson, the phase shift? Left 1. Left one. And Gabby, the vertical shift? Down 2. Down two. <coughs> Again, we find those things in order, but then we'll use them in reverse order. So down two means my new midline is down two. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my new sort of axis down there. And then I'll go left one to get my new origin. There's my starting point. 
I need to go eight away to get to the start over point. So one period equals eight. Uh, yes, I was going to go the other way, but negative nine would be one start over point. What about to the right? Seven. Seven. So yeah, either one of those or both of those are correct. We go eight away to the right, we land at seven. Eight away to the left, we land at negative nine. And that's not bad to do both of those because now if I'll put both of those on there, that'll be two cycles worth. Okay, amplitude is three. So now I'm ready to start graphing. Cosine starts at a max. So I'm going to start at a max. Now, again, be careful. It doesn't mean go up to three. All right, my max isn't three. My max is three up from the midline. One, two, three. So there's my max right there. And that also means... I want to label these points. Again, you don't. I'm not expecting you to label the points. I'm just trying to illustrate where things are coming from. So there's my starting point. My start over point would also be up three, but two pi away. And I, I guess you could do both cycles at once if you wanted to. I'm going to do one, though. Uh, halfway in between the maxes is a min. Uh, so be careful here. That would be at three, four away on each side. There's point C. And then halfway between those is on the midline. And that's especially tempting to draw V, but it's not a V, right? It's a cosine curve. There's my first cycle. Yeah, that first half of that wasn't great, but that's okay. Second half looked good. And then for a second cycle, you can either copy it forward or copy it backwards. cosine curve. And I didn't do it on the last one, although I said to do it earlier. Check your check your um, like properties. Almost nobody misses those. The, the difficulty comes from you know getting your properties onto the graph. So when you finish your graph, take a minute to see that I go down to. Yep. Did I go left one? Yes. Is my period eight? Yep. Is my amplitude three? Yes. Again, the mistakes happen. People get all this stuff right, and then they do something weird on the graph, and they should they should be able to look and see, wait a minute, that doesn't match up. So take the 10 seconds at the end to see if your graph matches the properties you said it would have. Okay, number eight has got a little trick built into it. <laughs> Negative. Well, hold on. It's back all the way up here. It's a cosine. It's going to look something like that. It is flipped, so I'm going to go ahead and sort of make a note of that. I don't have to say it anywhere, but I don't want to forget it, so I'm going to write it down. The tricky part is... Do you know what the tricky part is? The, the period isn't too bad, because the period is 2 pi over b. So the period's pi. The phase shift is the tricky part. Because to get the phase shift, it's supposed to just be x minus something, not 2x minus something. So what do I have to do with that 2? I need to, I need to take it out. But then i got to figure out what goes there so that if I distributed the 2, it would be back to pi over 2. Another way to say this is I'm dividing all of this by 2 to get that 2 out of there. So 1 fourth pi. So 1 fourth pi or pi over 4. 
Okay, so my phase shift is not right pi over 2. It's right pi over 4. And then down 3. All right, I'm going to pause and see if you can finish one. And I can forward that or backwards that either way. Again, I need to see two cycles. If you enjoy drawing sines and cosines because it's kind of fun, then knock yourself out and fill up the page. It's not hard. You just keep following the pattern and go for it if you like. You also don't need to highlight the first one. I just find it helpful so that looking at it, I can see that that's where my first cycle was. Uh, I am going to go back and check. Vertical shift down 3. Yep. Right pi over 4. Period is pi. Yep. And we're 3 up and 3 down, and it's flipped over. So I feel good about that answer. Uh-oh. Number nine. <laughs> tangent. Ugh, tangent. Um, okay, what does tangent look like? Normally it looks like that. Now I'll go back and find all the details, but I know my picture should look like that. Okay, it's just, it's kind of the same process. A, B, C, D, D, C, B, A. In fact... Let's, let's pick on people here. You like to bully us, sir. I, I do. Report me to eye help. Spencer's not here anymore. He's in the next period. <laughs> All right. Sometimes you're the get the easy one, sometimes you get the hard one. Although I don't know that any of those are that hard. I would say Aslan has the hardest one. Leah, how about the vertical dilation? Um, careful, not not this dilation. I would say stretch to. It, the problem is we don't call it amplitude because it's not a wave, so it's not technically an amplitude, but it is a stretch by two. Aslan, how about the period? It is 8 because it's pi over pi over 8. So keep it, change it, flip it. And the period is 8. Okay, the phase shift. Uh, right, one. right 1. And Josh and the uh, vertical shift is down 2. Okay, again, we find them A, B, C, D. And we use them D, C, B, A. So down two, I'm just going to go ahead and put my new, it's, I guess it's not a midline so much anymore. It's definitely not an asymptote, but it's like my new starting point. So I'm going to put it down there. Right one is my new origin. And period, I'll go eight away. Again, don't go to eight. Go eight away from where you started. So if we start at 1, we'll start over at 9. We could go backwards as well. If we start at 1, we would start over at negative 7. Okay, so now I've sort of got the, the grid laid out for where this thing is. My new origin, well, let's see, my A point, it goes through the origin. So it's going to go through that origin, or my new origin. And that also means it's going to go through my other, I, don't, I shouldn't call them origins. All right, what's happening halfway between the zeros of the tangent graph? Yeah, this is where it's a little bit tricky if you only draw one here. 
it might be a good reminder that there's asymptotes there. So halfway in between are my asymptotes. And you notice with provided graph paper, you can kind of just eyeball the halfway in between. You don't have to like, oh, let me add 1 and 9 and divide by 2. Or, like You can just count. It's, it's 8 spots, so halfway would be 4 spots. Yeah, I could put another one at 13. Good call. Um, okay, the vertical dilation is stretched by 2. So normally halfway between the 0 and the asymptote, we're up 1, because that's like tangent of pi over 4. We kind of lost all that among all this. But normally we're up 1. Now we're going to be up 2. And down 2 on the other side. And again, if that's the only three points, maybe you wouldn't know what it looks like. But we know what the parent function looks like. So having those three points is plenty to, to sketch in a tangent graph. And again, you don't have to highlight the first one. I find it helpful. You don't have to do, you don't have to fill up the graph, but I do want to see two cycles. Secant. Uh, how do we graph secant? Do you remember what I said or what we said for se graphing secant? Just graph cosine and then do the asymptotes and the u's. So I don't even know that I'm going to draw the. I'm going to draw a cosine because that's really what I want to graph first. Is a cosine. And once I have the cosine graph, then it's easy peasy after that. So let's pick on some more people. Let's see if I can get reported to iHelp for calling on students. Yeah, you got the easiest one. Because <laughs> I'm being accused of bullying. Uh huh. Somebody said I was bullying. Michael, what's the vertical dilation? Also known as the amplitude. Two. No, it is two. Cosine will be stretched by two. We're just going to graph cosine and worry about secant later. Uh, Evan, how about the period? Uh, so one, or four. <laughs> Which one? Four. Four pi. May see the phase shift? Right. right, pi. And dia the vertical shift? Up one. Up one. All right, that's A, B, C, D. Use it in reverse, DCBA. So up one is my new midline. Phase shift is right pi. So there's kind of my new starting point, my new origin. My period is four pi away. Again, do not go to four pi. You're going four pi away. Kill to label it, but not wrong if you did. So I'll start over at 5 pi, and I guess while I'm at it, 9 pi and negative 3 pi. That sort of sets up the windows where I'll graph the cosine in. <coughs> Lastly, my vertical dilation is 2. All right, cosine normally starts at a max, so I am going to start at a max, but my max is, again, be careful, it doesn't mean my max is at 2. It means my max is up to from the starting point, or from the new origin. And that means my start over point will also be up to. And halfway in between the maxes is a minimum, which is down to, down to from the new midline. Halfway in between there, we're on the midlines. There's 
my first cosine. That's the cosine graph. We wanted the secant graph. So all I need to do now is put on the asymptotes at the zeros, where, but the zeros of the midline. So not like the zeros on the x-axis, but the zeros on the new axis. off the top and bottom. Good morning. This is Matt Ashley. Please stand for the letters. I'm literally... We can kind of just to check them all. Right pi over 2. They're all down one, so that's not the concern. Right pi over 2? Yeah, that would be graph B would start there. Um, graph A would start there. Graph C, negative cosine, but left pi over 2. But the negative is flipped, so I think it's C. I mean, it, C works. D, negative sine, but left 3 pi would put us right there. And that is a negative sign, so that works. So all of those are equations of the same graph. Which is why I won't ever give you an open-ended question where I say, just tell me that equation, because there's infinite number of ways to describe that one picture.